Hello students, in this video we'll see how to find a formula for the centroid of a triangle in vector notation using the vertices of a triangle. If we're given a triangle ABC, given triangle ABC, let's draw this triangle. So here's A, then we'll go up to B, and then down to a point over here C. Let's plot let the midpoints of the side lengths B, B, D, E, and F. So let's let them be D, E, and F. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to call this point over here opposite from A. I'm going to call, let me draw this as, as best I can. That's like the midpoint over here. Let's call it midpoint D. So and over here at the midpoint of A and C, so that's going to be, uh, we'll call that point over here E, that's another midpoint. And of course we know that this length is this length, so it is a midpoint, and that this length over here is this length, so it's a midpoint. And then finally we have the point F over here, somewhere in the midpoint, right about there. That's the point F, and we know that this length is this length right over here. So we have the three midpoints, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the intersection, so I'm going to draw this first Savian from B to E. And then I'm going to draw the line from A, the Savian from A to D, right? And they're going to intersect, those two lines are going to intersect at a point which I'm going to call G over here. And so now what we're going to do is the following. We're going to find a representation of the, ve of the vector point G. Now we can think of each of these points, each of these vertices of the triangle as a vector, right? We can think of the origin as over here. So say for example here is the origin, and then this point over here A is really genuinely in a vector. That point B is genuinely a vector. The point C, I don't want to mess up the figure too much, but I could draw from, zero, from the origin to C, and that's a vector over here. And I can also draw from the origin to G. And so all of these things are really vectors, right? So these are vector points over here. And we have representation of these vector points too, right? And we have the vector representations of all of these things. So for example, we know that the what the vector E is. We know that the vector E, for example, is the midpoint of A and C. So the vector E is really the vector A plus the vector C over 2. That's the midpoint formula. The vector D is going to be, is going to be the midpoint of B and C. So that's going to be B plus C over 2. And so now what we know from this configuration is we know that the vector from B to G is in the same direction as the vector from B to E. So if I look at this vector over here, so this vector from B to G is in the same direction as the vector from B to E. So in other words, what we have over here is we have that the vector BG is a multiple of the vector b to e. So I'm going to call that first multiple over here lambda 1. So it's a multiple, a scalar multiple of the vector b to e, right? So now what is bg? That is the vector g minus the vector b. It's the endpoint minus the initial point for vectors. And then lambda, the vector e minus the vector b. Now we know what E is. E is going to be A plus C over 2. So let's simplify this. This is going to be lambda 1. And then I'm going to have an A plus C over 2 minus B. And so if we do one last simplification, we have lambda 1. And then we're going to have a lambda 1. And then we're going to have an A over 2. That's my A component. I'm going to have a lambda 1 C over 2. And I'll see what happens over here. We're going to have a a, I can throw this b on the other side of the equation, and then I'll have what? Then I'm going to have a 1 minus lambda 1b. So I'm going to have a plus 1 minus lambda 1, 1 from this b over here, and then a negative lambda 1 in the direction of b. And then we'll have a what? We'll have a lambda 1c over 2 plus lambda 1 and then that times c over 2. So this is one representation of my, vect of my vector g for the median, is this representation over here. I can also write down a second representation in terms of this a to d, right? So we also know similarly that from a to g, I know that a g, that vector a to g, is in the same direction as a to d. So this is going to be another multiple, maybe perhaps a different multiple. We don't know a priori that it's the same multiple yet. Lambda 2, and then what? 
and then the vector a to d. Okay, so this is going to be g minus a over here on the left hand side of the equation is lambda 2. And then we're going to have d, which is b plus c over 2. So that's going to be a b plus c over 2. And then minus a. So by the exact same calculation, we can conclude from this that g is equal to, let's count. So I'm going to have a 1 minus lambda, 1 minus lambda, 2 times the vector a. And then I'm going to have a lambda 2 times the vector b over 2. And then lambda 2 times the vector c over 2. So the conclusion from this is I have two different representations of g. Now the vectors a, b, and c are in a triangle, so each of those vectors are going to be dependent since they actually form a triangle. So they're independent of each other. So my conclusion from this is that all of these coefficients have to match up. So the conclusion from this, if we look carefully, let's look over here. So look at the coefficient of c. The coefficient of c is lambda 2 over 2. And the coefficient of c over here is what? Is lambda 1 over 2. So those coefficients have to be equal. They're both the coefficient of c and an independent collection of vector collection. And so our conclusion from this is that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. So lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. So this second representation over here, we can rewrite it in the following way. The second representation is really what? Is really 1 minus lambda 1 a and then plus lambda 1 and then b over 2 and then plus lambda 1 c over 2. So now I have two representations for g. They have to be the same representation. So look at this equation over here. So it must be the case that what? It must be the case that these coefficients over here, that 1 minus lambda 1 is equal to lambda 1. Because those are the coefficients of b. Or likewise, we could say what? We could say that lambda 1 over 2, so we have this lambda 1 over 2, has to be equal to 1 minus lambda 1. So our conclusion from this is that those coefficients have to be the same. So we, it must be the case that 1 minus lambda 1 is equal to what? Is equal to lambda 1 over 2. Is equal to lambda 1 over 2. We can solve this. This says that 1 is equal to 3 lambda 1 over 2. So lambda 1 is equal to 2 thirds. So let's write down our formula for g now. So our formula for g is the following. We know that lambda 1 is 2 thirds. So our representation of the vector g, the, me, uh, the centroid of this triangle, I have 1 minus 2 thirds. That's going to be a over 3. I have 2 thirds times um, 1 half. That's going to be 1 third of b. And then I have. 2 thirds uh, times 1 half, that's going to be 1 third of c. So all total, the equation, the vector form of the centroid of a triangle is 1 third the vector a for the vertex, the vector b, and the vector c. And now, since, the beautiful thing about this, is since this is symmetric, I can change the roles of a, b, and c, I know that this point g has to go through the midpoint, th through the Sabian that goes from c to f. So this midpoint over here, from the intersection of the line from C to F must go through the same intersection point as from B to E and from A to D. So in other words, all three of those median lines in this triangle have to be concurrent at the centroid. Thank you very much.